it comes to solving quadratics, uh, factoring is my general go-to. And there's a couple of different types of factoring that we can use to help us to solve. So the first type that I look at is looking for the greatest common factor. And I do that when there's not a constant term. So if there's only two terms in this expression. And what I ask myself is what term is, or what value is common to each term within this uh, binomial. So six and eight are both even. That means that they're both divisible by two. And both of these have an x in them. So I'm going to divide 6x squared and 8x both by 2x. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and x squared divided by x is x. Then I have a plus. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and x divided by x is just 1, so the x goes away. And I could check my work. I can, I can verify that this worked by multiplying, or using the distributive property, with this 2x back into the parentheses. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and 2x times 4 is 8x. So I know that I did this properly. And then using the zero product property, I could set each of these equal to zero, and then I could solve for x after having set them equal to zero. So in this one, x equals 0, and in this one, if I subtract the 4 over, I get 3x equals negative 4, and if I divide, x equals negative 4 thirds. Okay. Usually you want to see if you can factor out any GCF before you do any other factoring method, because it'll often get you smaller numbers so that you don't have to deal with as much craziness. The next type of factoring that I look for is called a difference of squares. All right, so a, a difference, meaning that I'm subtracting, and squares, meaning that it's, it's a value that has been squared. And I'll list off those numbers here in just a second. Now, if I have a difference of squares, I can break it into two sets of parentheses, one where the a and b value are being added, and one where they're being subtracted. So when I'm looking at, at perfect square numbers, I'm looking at things where I have multiplied the same number by itself. So like 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared being 16, all right? And I could just keep going, okay? I have a graphic organizer where I just keep a list of these just down the side and these are the kind of magic numbers that you want to keep your eye out for when you're factoring because they are the simple numbers to deal with. All right? Um, I usually recommend having the first 20 memorized um, just because they are so so common as we deal with factoring. Um, in this video, I'm just going to put up to 11 squared because it kind of meets my needs. So if you notice, in this problem, first I, I check to make sure there's no GCF that can be pulled out. A lot of times, uh, difference of squares are being masked by a GCF. So double check, make sure you can't factor any numbers out of 49 and 121. You can't. Now, 49 is the same thing as 7 squared, right? So, so 49x squared is the same thing as 7x squared. And 121, that's 11 squared. So that is the same thing as writing it like this, 11 squared. So then I can use my difference of square formula to where I break it into two sets of parentheses, one with a plus and one with a minus, and I could fill in my a's, so the seven x's, and then I could fill in my b's, and now I have it fully factored. Uh, the next one that I look for is called a uh, perfect square trinomial. 
this one's usually easier to see when you don't have a number in front of the square term. I'm going to show you how to do it when there is. So some of the things to look for to tell if you have a perfect square trinomial. The first thing is that these ending numbers are perfect squares. Which when I look at my list, 4 and 25 are both on that list. And then what we do is we look to make sure that this is an even number because there's a 2 in the formula. So if you have perfect squares on the end and an even number in the middle, there's a high likelihood that you have a perfect square trinomial. So what I do for this is I take this first term and I find the square root of it. So 4x squared, the square root is 2x, and 25, the square root is 5. And then I would just drop that sign down and then call it squared. Now to verify that this worked is I can I could take this middle term and divide it by 2. So negative 20x divided by 2 is negative 10x. And that's kind of my target number. So if I multiply 2x times negative 5, do I get negative 10? Yes, I do. And so that's how I know I factored this properly. This is one of those kind of special cases that when you see it, it makes things go very quickly. But if you don't see it, factoring by grouping will get you to the same place. All right, so it's nice when it's there, but if, it, if you don't see it right away, there's other ways to get there. Now the last form of factoring that I'm covering is the most common form of factoring. It's called factoring by grouping. So what factoring by grouping does is it has us split this middle term into two new terms that are being added together. And the way that we know how to split it is we compare the a times c value. So a lot of people create a little table like this. So they need to multiply to whatever a times c is. So in this case, 3 times 8, which is 24. And they need to add to this b value, which is 10. So I, I'm just going to list off the factors that make 24. I have 1 and 24. I have 2 and 12, I have 3 and 8, I have 4 and 6. So those are all the factors of 24. So it might be helpful for you to have a multiplication table handy because it's easy to, to just look for 24 inside that multiplication table. Now I'm going to add these together. So 1 plus 24 is 25, 2 plus 12 is 14, 3 plus 8 is 11, and 4 plus 6 is 10. So the one that matches, the one that sums to 10, is 4 and 6. So I am breaking 10x into 4x and 6x. Now that first term isn't changing. It's still 3x squared. And that last term is still an 8. Now it's important that when we separate these, that there's a plus in between here. So if one of these terms ends up having to be negative, which we'll talk about the signs in another video, um, you need to make sure that it says plus a negative number. Okay. Now our next step says to split it into two groups with a plus in between. So I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around each of these. Then I'm going to factor the greatest common factor out of each of these groups. So 3x squared and 4x the GCF is x, so I get 3x plus 4. And then here, 6x and 8, the GCF is a positive, ooh, not 3, positive 2. And if I divide 2 from each of these, I get 3x plus 4. Now notice that you have a, a kind of copied number here our copied expression. You need that, okay? So the thing that gets copied gets written down as one of the sets of parentheses, and then the stuff that's being multiplied in front of them 
is what goes into the other set of parentheses. So the, the GCFs that you factored out. So here's where I factored by grouping. So factoring, like I said, once you have done it enough, becomes the simplest way uh, to solve a quadratic. But not all quadratics are factorable. So you want to get really good at factoring because if you could see it right away, it's, it's quick to factor. And then if it's not something that you see right away, then pop it into the, either the quadratic formula or completing the square. But that is the factoring portion for this worksheet.